Thanks very much. Do I get to use these three minutes that are left on this? Oh, oh bugger. Um, anyways, um, kick off with the obligatory disclaimer. For those speed readers that are out here, I'll probably do a bit of housekeeping. First of all, I should thank the organisers. Um, I was meant to be talking tomorrow. Uh, didn't expect that I'd be first cab off the rank after the keynote speakers. Uh, notwithstanding that, I uh, appreciate them making the time, and I do apologise for jumping the queue for all of the speakers that are here, but I'm about to hop on a flight in about three hours to, to Singapore. Uh, if you haven't finished that, keep reading some housekeeping. Because I'm not going to be here uh, probably from about 15 minutes on, uh, I've left my cards out in our booth. Our booth will be empty. Uh, please take the cards if you've got any questions. Some of the slides here are a little bit detailed. Uh, please do not hand those cards out in the bar tonight. <laughs> Starting off with the obligatory corporate snapshot. This is quite telling and uh, from my perspective quite sobering. Uh, as I sat here or stood here uh, more correctly last year, uh, we were probably around 30 odd cents. We'd raised capital, we were well and truly into a pretty aggressive drilling program to, to, to hopefully unlock the Glenaris gas project. As I sit here today, we're, we're, we're around seven cents. The key takeaways, if I can make any from this slide is, as I said, it, it, is, it is quite telling in that the last 12 months, and hopefully you get a sense of this when I finish the presentation, the last 12 months have seen a quantum leap in knowledge on this project and hopefully uh, the capacity to take this forward uh, in the next three, six, 12 months. I should say on that slide, one thing that, that, that I would point out is, is there was an R&D, and if I can see if I can go back here, and this will be a challenge. If you look at this slide, you'll see a pretty marked drop at the back end of January, early Feb. It's not a coincidence that that coincided with our quarterly going out basically implying that we were short cash and we were come due. That's unfortunate because that was an incorrect assumption. Uh, we were successful in a $7.8 million R&D claim that got us to the point that we're currently at. But as you see, downward trends don't necessarily write themselves um, on the back of positive news thereafter. The other thing, and as uh, alluded to, I'm a very proud New South Welshman, but I have to say the Queensland Government has been fast, fantastic in the support that they've given us, and I'll hopefully elaborate on that a little bit later in the presentation. But the reason why we're still here and the reason why we persist is it's the size of the prize. This is a genuine multi-TCF project. We are a fully integrated company to date. Yes, uh, that is us. We are literally uh, irrigate at the moment about 150 hectares of land with the water that we produce as a byproduct of our production operations. That does coexist with our existing pilot. Our existing pilot is actually dwarfed by our agricultural operations. Quickly, I suppose, to give you a bit of context of where we are today, looking at some of the investment highlights, as I said, it's the size of the prize. That's why we're here, that's why we're persisting. We've got upwards of 5,000 petajoules, five TCF or thereabouts of independently certified 3C resources, about two, two and a half of 2C. We are the operator and we do have 100% ownership of this project. That's significant because it gives us option optionality going forward. Uh, one um, obvious option in that regard is, is partners and, and when we bring them in. Everybody here I'm sure is across the East Coast gas thematic. We're obviously ideally located. Having said that, obviously, you need to get the gas to market, and we have an, a, uh, an MOU with APA to, to look at that routes to market. That would be through from Longreach, through Buckhold, and ultimately down, down to Kaladi. We have one counterparty uh, in, in, in our data room at the moment. I think we're ideally placed based on the work that we've done, particularly over the last six to nine months, and hopefully you'll get a sense of that, uh, ideally placed to engage with, with potential partners now or in the future going forward. And once again, that Queensland Government, that $21 million, that is for the Galilee Bowen, Galilee Bowen Basin Frontier Exploration Initiative. And obviously, we are the, the, the premier uh, and in essence, probably the only player in the Galilee Basin. Um, I'm not saying we're going to get half of the 21 million, but uh, in all likelihood, we should get a, 
a fair chunk of that. I think the history is important because it gives you context of, I think you need context of where we are, where we've been to get a sense of, of, of where we're going. And it has been a long, well travelled path. There's been over $150 million spent on this project to date. It goes back 30 years, it goes back to Enron in the early 90s, goes back to the precursor, the, subsequently, the, the precursor to what was Gal what ultimately became Galilee Energy. Um, and I actually, believe it or not, wrote the expert report for that IPO that didn't actually see the light of day in 2000. Interestingly, a lot of the issues that I highlighted in that expert report are what we're dealing with and confronting today. It then goes on to AGL, and then more recently, over the last five years, Galilee as it exists today. I've currently been with Galilee for about the last 20, 22 months. This is possibly the, the most complicated pilot you'll see anywhere in the world. Uh, it is a function of a learning curve uh, that does span that, that 30 years and a learning curve that hopefully you'll get a sense we're on the cusp of, of cracking. As I said, I think we've seen unprecedented progress in the last six to, to 12 months. We've undertaken uh, uh, zonal isolation testing, pressure testing of all of our coals and sands. We've done remedial operations on a lot of our wells to isolate the, the lower Aramac sands from the Betts Creek. We've done... Uh, unparalleled number of just build up tests to, to, to undertake pressure surveys. Uh, we've very completed GA3, which I'll talk to, but GA3 is a, um, a historical AGL well. We've done that to, to possibly trap any gas that's migrating, and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later as well. We've undertaken the 3D seismic program to get a better handle on the stratigraphy and structure that may be impacting some of the results we're seeing. And the end result is, at the end of the day, I think we are closer today than we've ever been to unlocking the potential in space. And I know that's sounding like a bit of a broken record. You've probably heard me say it last year. And I think it's fair to say that previous presenters prior to me on this project have been saying the same. I can say with all confidence, however, we probably learned more in the last six months than this project in its entirety in the last 30 years. So the challenge is for us, so yes, right, so you've got the pressure down. You're well down the path, you're close to critical desorption, or maybe you're past critical desorption, depending on where you sit, where's the gas? This is a complex slide, and I'll try simplify it as best I can. And see, the, the point is going to be challenging here. The world to, to, to look at here is, is Glenaris 20. Glenaris 20 is, is, is a key bit of data for us. If you look at, if you look at Glenaris 20, which is on the right-hand side of the the slide, you'll look at the green and, the, and the, the, the blue lines, they are two pressure traces from a well that's been pumping for nine months and shut in. As you can see, and if I can do this, at the end of nine months when we shut those wells in, they basically went back to the same pressure. So we had done nothing with nine months of pumping. We then surrounded G20 as part of our program last year with all of these wells through this arc here essentially trying to address the, the, the water influx from this fault. And as you can see, significant advancement. So the previous nine months we've done nothing, we've put these additional wells in, we now see a definitive change. The, the aim of our program prior was to get the pressure down within the laterals to between 400 and 500, we did that, was to get the verticals down to somewhere um, below 600 and we did that. The challenge was and is, well, where's the gas? So what's potentially inhibiting the gas? One, it could be that the gas, and, and we produce a lot of water, as you can see by the agricultural aspect of our business. Uh, the, the flow rates are such that the fluid dynamics down hole could be capturing that gas as it dissolves and it's going to be you know, modest to begin with. It could be taking that away, ultimately potentially up dip. I mentioned GA3 previously. So we've recommissioned a well, it was an AGL well drilled about 10 years ago to possibly trap that migrating gas if that's, the, if that's the cause. The other possibility is, um, and as you can see here, is perhaps we don't have enough of the coal below critical desorption, because we produce from the sands and the coals in entirety. And if you look at this, this is about a 600 psi depletion over nine months. It's probably actually more, more closer to five. The black dots are coal. The, Yellow here is sands, but as you can see, if, if this is our hypothesised 
and when I say hypothesise, it's based on data, desorption pressure, some of the coals here are above it. So it's conceivable that we, we haven't quite got there, but we are close. And as you can see, in, in a short, relatively short period, notwithstanding that this has been going for five years, in the last uh, five months or so, we have reduced the pressure significantly. One final possibility is, and if you look at this coal seam outlier here, it's possible that maybe the desorption pressure is actually just lower than what we thought. Um, if you look at the slide on the, the, the left here, uh, even just a 10% decrease in gas saturation uh, sees the desorption pressure go from 600 to 525. Doesn't sound material, but when you see the work we've got to do to get to that point, it could be the other reason why we're, we're seeing delayed reaction. But the positive is that notwithstanding all of that, even that 10% reduction, even actually a reduction down to 450 PSI still sees very, very robust uh, EURs or ultimate re recovery for this well. Final point on this slide is, for the first time in this project's history, we are seeing increasing gas rates, modest as it is, and decreasing water rates. Uh, that's something we haven't seen before, and it's pretty telling. So the solution is either patience and or we, we drill a, a additional potential wells. Now, before everybody goes crazy and says, well, that's a cap raise, you've come due, uh, yes and no. We, we, are, we are funded at the moment. Uh, we do have an R&D rebate. I mentioned the last year's rebate. We have another rebate coming for this year that we'll, we should have by the end of the year. We've also got the potential funding from the, from the Queensland Government's Frontier Basin Initiative. And so I look at it and I sit, see where we sit today. I don't think... I think we've now, for the first time in this company's history, we've got all the data we need, all the critical data that we need to progress this project forward and also, at the right time, talk to potential counterparties about assisting us in that path. So the way forward for us, I, I, I seriously see us as a, as, as a genuine uh, integrated energy agribusiness. Won't talk to the specifics other than we, we currently do... Uh, sorghum, barley, oats. We're looking at more higher yielding crops. We're also looking at um, ultimate CO2 sequestration opportunities. Now, literally, oh, well, I can point to this one. Literally, that is CO2 sequestration in action. Uh, so given this is an investment conference and I'm down to two minutes or a little bit less, so, so why invest in Galilee given the history, given everything that... Uh, that we've been through over the last five years or so. It's really the last 12 months is the reason why I invest in Galilee. We've never been cheaper. Uh, we've also never understood the reservoir better. We've never had the reservoir pressure lower um, in, the, in the entire project's history. Once again, quite telling. Um, this is our pressure plot. Uh, sorry, this is our water and gas rate plot. Unfortunately, we share price transposed over the top of it. So look at us today. I don't think um, there's a, a better buying opportunity out there if we can deliver on uh, the, the promises and the hope that we're chasing. In summary, there's a lot of boxes ticked here. There's one box left to go, and that's the gas, the commercial gas rate production box. We're close. We're not there on the first to acknowledge that. But everything is in place. The trends are there to suggest that we'll get there. Appreciate your time, guys. Thanks very much.